So this is about vitamin D. I will do others. I wanted to just let you guys know that this is an essential vitamin stroke hormone. We don't get enough sun unless you're in sunny Australia or somewhere like Africa or maybe in Arizona on the west coast of the US. We don't get enough enough sun and to be honest with you you can even have sun and it doesn't mean you're going to process it properly even when i'm in the sun i don't process it properly if you're going to take a vitamin d supplement always make sure it's d3 d2 is a pointless version of vitamin d d3 is the type that we get from the sun which our body turns into vitamin d so for taking vitamin D2, you usually find vitamin D2 in, <coughs> excuse me, cereals. You might find it in added into milk and you think, oh, it's got added vitamin D. Well, it's not going to do much, okay? The stuff you get from the pharmacy, um, health food stores, is usually around a 1,000 units. That's usually their, their clusters higher dose. That, that is, I'd say, at a minimum every day. OK, if you're living in some in a northern hemisphere where you're not getting much sun, especially during winter. I would I would be taking that to put it in perspective I, when I was really low and I wouldn't recommend this. I was on 60,000 units a week for about four months and then I take a thousand units a day permanently now. I can't come off them ever again. And I've not touched wood, I've not broken much since, apart from a toe again, I think. So it's very important that you take your vitamin D. And D2, bear in mind, like I've said, is a pointless version of vitamin D3. So I've come onto this website here, it's called The Pharmacy Times. And it talks here about how vitamin D does boost your immune system. OK, so a lot of people really don't realise that vitamin D is not just for bones. Rickets is coming back in children. There is an adult version of rickets as well. That in because it's adult bone, that it affects the bones differently because the children's bones are still growing. But bear in mind that all human beings, our bones remineralize constantly throughout our lives the older we get the less that they do it and if you're not having that done as a child you end up with rickets which is as we all know is horrendous and horrific and it affected a lot of in the victorian days the children who were in the workhouses and weren't getting outside and getting some sunshine and getting some fresh air ended up with this horrific disease so and just bear in mind as well in the UK, the, um, the, the NHS in the UK, I'm not sure about the States, recommend that all children five and under have a vitamin D supplement daily, regardless of whether they've got a deficiency or not. So bear that in mind as well. I would say everybody. So this is from the Pharmacy Times. And it says here, vitamin D helps our immune system stay balanced during the cold and flu season. You don't think of it, do you? You think, oh, take vitamin C. No. Well, yes, but vitamin D too. Vitamin D receptors and activating enzymes on the surface of all white blood cells. The role that vitamin D plays in keeping the immune system healthy is very complex because the immune system has to be perfectly balanced. If there is too much stimulation, autoimmune diseases can set in. If there is not enough autoimmune the immune system activity frequently infections can occur low levels of vitamin d have been linked with both extremes and low le low level of vitamin d have been associated with worsening autoimmune diseases so your autoimmune diseases for example are your rheumatoid arthritis which is a form of arthritis that is is not like osteoarthritis where it happens your bones rub together and it happens naturally most old people have got osteoarthritis you can get it younger as well if you're unlucky low vitamin d can cause it which is why i've ended up with it but you, you you see you know celiac disease is another autoimmune disease there's there's lots of autoimmune diseases i think 
MS is an autoimmune disease as well. So low vitamin D, autoimmune disease. So low levels of vitamin D are not the underlying cause of the autoimmune disease, but low levels of vitamin D can make the autoimmune disease states worse. Low levels of vitamin D have also been associated with frequent infections. In 2009, the National Institute of Health warned that low vitamin D levels are associated with frequent colds and influenza. So this could be why people seem to be getting sicker and sicker. Now, I, I've got to take my vitamin D recently and I've been very poorly. So I'm back on it now. And vitamin C. So it appears that vitamin D helped keep the immune system balanced, much like a gymnast walking on a balance beam. Uh, there have been many studies to determine the best regime of vitamin D supplementation. Now, in 2017, a large analysis of prospective clinical trials showed that taking vitamin D reduces the odds of developing a respiratory infection by approximately 42%. Okay? In people with baseline levels of 25 or below. Now, if you look at that 25 NG-ML, or below then um, that is around if you do it in a different equation the equation that they use here is is n m o n m l and 25 is around 50 in that and mine was unrecognizable so mine was well below that level and then some uh, the analysis suggests that taking daily vitamin D or weekly was more effective than larger doses taken singly. So the most common daily dose was D3, 300 to 4,000 units a day. So again, I would say 1,000 units a day would be ideal. And researchers found monthly high dose vitamin D supplementation does not prevent acute respiratory infection. So you need to keep going daily with it basically. Uh, participants were given 20,000 units followed by 100,000 units monthly so giving it a blast and then not taking it at all is you might as well not bother so with the coronavirus being a respiratory disease it seems to be a pneumonia disease um, taking vitamin D can give you 42% more chance of not getting sick so that's really really high so this is how important vitamin D is. So do your own research. I'll put some links in the description. Um, I would really recommend you do your own research on this. Um, because it, it's, you know, you, people just don't realise. And I didn't realise until I got diagnosed that you could even be tested for it now. But you can. So there you go. So... A few points to remember is it vitamin D3, it's called cholesterol, I think it is, or cholesterol is the official name. You can buy it from a pharmacy. Um, if you've got a known deficiency, you can get it on prescription. Um, but obviously, it's probably cheaper to buy it from the pharmacy. You can get it from certain foods, but to get it from foods we don't synthesize it very well at all you're better off taking it we get it from the sun mostly the foods doesn't go process very well to do as it just wouldn't you wouldn't get enough from food basically alone another thing to add is magnesium as a supplement also helps vitamin d absorb into the body so just like taking vitamin c helps iron it helps your body absorb iron. So if you're having problems taking iron because it gives you a bad tummy or whatever, side effects, if you take it alongside vitamin C, it will help your body absorb it better so you won't have as many side effects. Now, it's similar to vitamin D and magnesium. It doesn't, doesn't stop any side effects because there isn't really any with vitamin D that I know of, okay? I'm not saying there isn't, but I've not come across any and I've been on a super high dose. But magnesium will help your body absorb the vitamin D. 
some people even say vitamin D on its own is an absolutely pointless thing to take unless you're taking it with magnesium. So bear that in mind. There are some quite good bone um, vitamins you can get. And now I take one called Osteocare, I think it's called. And you get vitamin D, you get calcium and you get uh, magnesium in one tablet. So you're getting everything you need for your bones. So that's like a basic one. You can get ones with glucosamine and stuff that help your, as your muscles and your tissues as well. So there's lots out there. I will pop a few links in the description. But I just wanted everyone to know the importance. Now that we've got this coronavirus and other nasties going around, we need to boost our immune systems. So that is, that is one thing that I would do. Obviously, keep eating fruit and veg keep healthy smoothies juicing but anyone that says you don't need to take a supplement of vitamin d if you're not getting any sunshine and you can get it from food i'm sorry but they're sadly mistaken we do not get enough from food alone we need sun or a supplement Humans were not designed to be sat in a school all day or in an office all day. And then in the winter, you never even see the daylight most of the time. We're not designed for that. We're designed to be outdoors. We're designed to be out and about. Children should be playing, not sat in a classroom. And this is causing an epidemic now of vitamin D deficiency which is causing cancers, it's, it's lowering people's immune systems, autoimmune diseases. You know, the research is out there. So just keep that in mind, folks. Um, I cannot stress enough, vitamin D. Right, thank you very much for listening and you take care. Bye-bye.